of what's happening in your community and direct it back to prosperity, back to affordability, back to liberty and justice and freedom and power to the people, government by and for the people. If you can't do that here in your hamlet by the sea, if you can't do it wherever you're listening to this and you think, well, you've got to go to your county seat or your borough seat or the state capitol or Washington, D.C. to make a difference, then it's already lost. It's already gone. It's too late, too little, too late. If you think that it's lost here for good, and it's got to be done on a global level, if you're more worried about what's happening in Egypt than what's happening here, it's already too late. It's not, though. That's the good word. That's the message of today's program. It is not too late. As we gear up for a local election here in Homer, Alaska, I cannot help myself but go back to the archives and retread some old sound that uh, I've already shared with you. I can't help it. We've got to talk about it. We've got to talk about politicians that wish to increase poverty rather than increase prosperity. We've got politicians that would rather you shut up about Obamacare if you don't like it and come up with your own solution. We've got politicians locally I'm talking about that don't understand business and the importance of small business, the importance of the business person in the community creating tax dollars, creating jobs, creating revenues and opportunities and services that make this an incredible place to live wherever this place is. It happens to be I'm broadcasting from Homer, Alaska. I'm proud to be a lifelong Homer, Alaskan. I've lived elsewhere, but my friend, I'm telling you, I've never really left Homer. In my heart of hearts, I've lived here my entire life. Who else has lived here most of his life? His name is Mike Pate. Mike Pate decided one day, turning about 65 or 66 years old, he's about to turn 66, and he says, you know what? I'm going to leave Homer for a while and ride a bicycle by myself across the country from west to east coast. Why would you do that? Why would you do that when you're 26, let alone 66? Well, Mike will tell his tale. In fact, he's already given me the story, and we will air it in a series of uh, a series of uh, events we're calling The Heartland Ride. Today will be the debut of that program called The Heartland Ride, and we'll probably do about two or three other segments. So this is going to be a, a really fun, inspiring, and motivational story to hear tell. So be sure to stick around for that. Plus, today on deck, we've got not only the audio sound bites, but I'll be reading the profiles of who you'll have an opportunity to vote for come October and what you'll have an opportunity to vote for. Will you vote for liberty or tyranny? Will you vote for freedom or will you vote for enslavement? It's up to you. It may sound extreme. It may sound a little ridiculous to some of you that are huddling away in your, your closets listening to this and not telling anybody that you listen. You mean, oh, that guy's ridiculous. Yeah, he's an extremist. He's an absolute ludicrous extremist. Turn it up. I want to hear more. It's the truth. You have an opportunity. It's coming up in October. But today on Alaska Matters, you and I shall explore freedom and we will explore liberty and staycations in your own backyard. I'm so excited. I hope you don't miss a minute of what my mom calls the greatest show on earth. Let us be sure that those who come after will say of us in our time that in our time we did everything that could be done. We finished the race. We kept them free. We kept the faith. All we need to begin with is a dream that we can do better than before. All we need to have is faith, and that dream will come true. All we need to do is act, and the time for action is now. The time for action is slipping away. The time is slipping away. It's not too late, though. It's absolutely not too late. Don't give in. Don't give up. Welcome back to Alaska Matters. I'm Christopher Story. Don't forget to stay tuned after the 12.30, no, after the 1 o'clock news, we'll be joined by Mike Pate. He'll be telling us all about the Heartland Ride. That'll be coming up in the second half of the program. And in just a moment, we'll do our Blackwater Bend Alaskan Mind Bender. 
Last night, now see, we returned from Seward. We went to Seward, Tiffany and I and the family, Ashley and Richard and Zoe and Nevaeh and Austin and my mom and dad. We all went over to Seward. We invaded. It was sort of like the southern invasion of western Seward. We went over to Seward, and we spent the weekend there. In fact, my folks are still over there annihilating the Silvers. And I say that with some reluctance because, you know, how many people do you really want competing with them? Because right now they're fishing for everybody uh, in our family. Sorry. But anyway, so we, we had a great time over there, and it prompted me to make some notes appropriately about what it's like to take a staycation. And maybe you're overworked. Maybe you're under-rested. Maybe you've been putting off a vacation. Because let's face it, a family of four, three, or even just a couple, going to an exotic location can cost a lot of money. And it's uh, not necessarily always in the budget. But there's always something you can do in your own backyard. And so we'll talk about that and staycations, and I'll give you the recipe for maybe one of the best ways to cook a salmon that you, you've ever had. I'll share that later in the program as well. But before we get too far along, I want to continue this theme of affordable and prosperous. By the way, the way to contact me and connect with me right now, if you'd like to, on anything you're hearing here, anything you'd like to add or contribute, 299-7653, 299-7653. Also, you can email story at xyz.net. I'll check that during the breaks. But text message is pretty much always live and local, 299-7653 if you'd like to weigh in. Can Homer, can your community, can the state of Alaska, can the United States of America both be affordable places to live and prosperous? Can they go hand in hand? So I want to take you back in time to a while back when we had um, a discussion about non-prepared foods tax. There was a discussion in Homer whether or not over the course of the winter we would repeal the holiday on non-prepared non foods sales tax. So we're talking bread, peanut butter. We're talking the staples to make a salad, produce, fresh foods. We're talking about fruit and vegetables. I like to say it that way, by the way, vegetables. I know that I don't always. Sometimes I slip back into vegetables. But when I wish to sound uh, erudite, I'll say vegetables. I'll talk about negotiating, things of this nature. That's when you know I'm in a good mood. So your vegetables were going to go up. Brian Zach, a sitting current uh, city councilman, wanted you, specifically Brian Zach, wanted you to pay more for your bread. He didn't think you were paying enough. He wanted you to pay more for your bread. Councilman Lewis joined him. And as you'll recall, Councilman Lewis said this about small business people. Certain benefits. Everyone has made choices, whether they wanted to work for the city, they wanted to work for themselves, what they wanted to, to uh, do. And none of this was hidden when you wanted to make those uh, choices. So, you know, it's not the city workers that they get up plum deal and I don't because I made a bad choice. Booyah! Oh, you made a bad choice being self-employed. Imagine if we were all government employees. I have no bone to pick with the government employees. No problem whatsoever. They do a good job. My point is, could we all work for the... It doesn't work that way. That's like a giant self-licking ice cream cone. It doesn't work. You need small business. You cannot say that there is such a thing as a bad choice to go into small business. I, don't, I never could understand that. And followed by this statement, when you couple these two together from several months ago to his more recent comments, you have to wonder what on earth it, is going through his mind as he sits in the council chair. It's expensive to live in Homer. There's no doubt about it. You know, you need to have a good job to uh, make it here. And as much as I would love to say it's, you know, we can make it cheaper, we can make it better, that's just not going to happen. It's an expensive place. And, you know, you just have to live with it. I'm sorry, but that's the way that it is. And I'll shut up now before I put my foot in my mouth a second time. <laughs> Too late. Okay. Uh, and I say these things and I replay these things with all due respect to the positions that Councilman Lewis and Brian Zach hold. Those are coveted and sacred positions. When you take the sacred trust of the people and you, you accept, you, you say, yes, I will put my name forward as a leader. I will be a candidate and take a leadership role in this community. 
you may not be compensated, and we've discussed this before, you're not going to be compensated financially. In fact, you'll be precluded from certain deals that you otherwise could have benefited from possibly through um, you know, having to recuse yourself from something based on partiality. You want to remain impartial to certain things. So there's a code of ethics, et cetera. It may not even be in your financial best interest to be a leader of the community in this case. My point in saying all this is that power can be its own form of compensation and when misdirected and when misused and abused it can be the worst form of malfeasance perpetrated against the people that, it, that you can even think of and yes I'm talking about the small town of Homer Alaska it doesn't matter that the decisions are simply oh, a, a thickness of a bag or whether or not you can collect coal from a certain spot of the beach or driftwood or if you're gonna have to bag your dog's feces when you're at the beach etc it, it all of these things are eroding slowly but surely. And to say that, well, we're not compensated by much, this is what I'm leading towards is the argument about term limits. First, we're going to come back to the council. We'll move over to Assemblyman Smith and his commentary. Um, and I'll let you decide if it's duplicitous. I'll let you decide if, if there really are two sides of Assemblyman Smith, depending on where and who, to whom he's speaking. I'll play the clips and let you decide if what he says in Homer sounds different than what he says in the Central Peninsula. I've got two different examples. I'll let you decide if it's duplicity or if it's just simply maybe um, a, a different frame of reference or frame of mind when he made the statements. I'm not going to draw my own aspersions. I'll let you do that. Um, but right now, according to the Homer News, the last check of their website, there are four people, four individuals running for the Homer City Council. Now, remind yourself, there are two positions that are going to be coming available, four individuals running. They are Gus Van Dyke, Corbin Arno, Justin Arnold, and Brian Zach. First, I'll read Gus's statement. Uh, and again, this is according to the, the Homer News. And I, I haven't spoken to Gus about this, but I'm going to take, take it at his word that, he, that this is um, accurately quoted. Gus says, there is definitely something wrong when the attitude of government is to spend, spend, spend. And if they run short of money, they will find some way to tax the business or individuals to pay for it. This is said by Van Dyke in his candidate statement. It's time for we the people to regain control of this runaway train. Cue applause sound effect. Justin Arnold. Arnold said in his statement that he was running for city council because I don't believe we need the government dictating every aspect of our daily lives, like telling us what kind of grocery bags we may use and wasting time and resources to create laws enforcing the amount of water your shower head can use. Corbin Arno said, government is of the people, by the people, and for the people. It seems to all, all too often, that government serves their own special interests rather than the interests of the people. Government is there to help individuals grow and prosper, not limit and control. I see too much and too much control and not enough help. Government was designed to, ma and to maintain our freedoms and not to enslave us. I am running because I am tired of politics as usual and to give the people their voice back. God bless Homer. That's Corbin Arno. Brian Zach. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to literate. I'm just going to read it. Because I care about maintaining and improving the quality of life in Homer, we need to make smart fiscal decisions, ensure parks and community facilities are fully operational, work with local schools, the hospital, the senior center, as well as supporting, uh, providing support for our small businesses and nonprofits. There it is. And I added underneath that, and maybe I shouldn't have, but I did, and to reinstate the non-prepared foods tax so your food costs more, to vote twice to limit the thickness of plastic bags, except those provided by the city for dog poop at environmentally sensitive, sensitive locations like Bishop's Beach and the Homer Spit, and to vote to increase the tax on tenants of apartment buildings an extra $45 per month because we can. Now, again, that was my addition to Councilman Zach's uh, statement for public office. That's, uh, that's all that I've got there. Now, so we've, we've heard from Councilman Lewis. I wanna, I, we've got to go back. Let's listen to another council person. And all of this, again, is to simply underline and, and underscore and emphasize the fact that your vote matters. Your vote really does matter. Because here is a sitting council person, and hear this. It concerns me when individuals specifically intentionally rely on misinformation in order to advance their point. You know, what goes around comes around. 
that's a, that's a dangerous path to follow. And you think your vote doesn't count? Your vote absolutely counts. Now, you may not know that based on the way our vote is treated as it pertains to non-prepared foods tax, term limits. We're going to find out about plastic bags coming up. We're also going to find out where your heart lies. I'm going to be reading your texts in a moment. We'll come back with our Blackwater Bend Espresso Alaskan Mindbender, give away a couple of coffee cards, and have more, much, much more to say here on Alaska Matters. Mmm... Gotta, do, gotta love good music and coffee. I'm drinking Blackwater Bend Espresso. Mm. Ah, Pink Floyd and Blackwater Bend Espresso. Just the way God intended it. Why should you support term limits? Why, it, it, here's a better question. Why should the Kenai Peninsula Borough support term limits in your vote? What did your vote mean? What did it stand for? Does it mean anything? When you go to the ballot box and you pull the curtain and you punch a Chad, no, oh, not a guy named Chad, does it mean anything? Does it stand for something? And yes, it does. And you know what it was paid for with? It was paid for with blood, blood, sweat, and tears, paid for your vote to mean something. It absolutely means something. Now, the first clip I'm about to play is Assemblyman Bill Smith presenting in front of and to the Homer City Council. And following that will be Assemblyman Smith discussing term limits on a radio station in Central Peninsula. So first we go to the City Council meeting where Assemblyman Smith is discussing term limits. The borough assembly currently has a two-term limit on assembly members, and some people, uh, particularly from Kenai, feel that uh, they should be able to choose their own assembly members without somebody from home or telling them that they can't run again. And here he is on a Kenai radio station. Not only from assembly members, but from other members of the public, they pretty strongly feel that, uh, you know, term limits is... Uh, not appropriate, and uh, and I think a lot of the assembly members feel strongly that it's not appropriate. And um, so, asking the question again, uh, I don't know if somebody should feel threatened by taking it to the voters. I mean, is that is that a big threat to somebody that we're going to ask the voters? Is it a big problem? Yeah, it's a big problem, Bill. It's a big threat to liberty and the way the system is set up. You want to play the game, then play the game. If there's enough of the public that wants to see term limits repealed, Assemblyman Smith, with all due respect, then you go and, as uh, Fred Sturman said, get your 200 bucks out, fill out the application, collect the signatures, and put it on the ballot. Nine of you sat in a room and said, you know what, we know better than the populace. We know better than the people that got out, got off their couches, went in and voted, and said yes to term limits. Now, you can de debate the, the, the relevance of term limits on a borough level or a city level, local level versus state and federal. You can have that debate all day long. In fact, Assemblyman Pierce and I have had that discussion. Assemblyman Pierce and Assemblyman, uh, oh, it'll come to me in a second, Wolf, thank you, have, have all, we've had this discussion amongst each other. We don't necessarily, you don't have to like term limits, but it's the law of the land. You can't indiscriminately decide you don't like the law anymore and obviate the whole process by which it was put into place because you can. It's not right. Now, was he saying two different things? I'll let you decide. Or was it just a variation of the same theme? I got the impression in front of the council meeting here in Homer, it was, well, it's, you know, it's not, I, I'm relatively indifferent. It's really the people up in Kenai. And then on the Kenai radio program, it sounded to me very much like, well, what's the problem? Why would you be threatened by this? I mean, what's the big deal? And the fact of the matter is you should be threatened. This is the same assembly that is withdrawn and removed, repealed, uh, taken away, scorned, whatever, pick a, pick a, a uh, a word, they have removed your private property rights without written notification. And it may not affect you today, but it may affect you in the coming future. We're talking about today properties on salmon streams. We're talking about the anadromous streams ordinance. That's today. Well, what is it tomorrow? I don't really know, but I know it's coming. If you don't speak up and it's time to 
slap them upside the head, proverbially speaking, at the ballot box and say it again and say it loud and proud. In fact, here's what I encourage. Even if you don't like term limits, even if you want term limits to be removed and repealed from the assembly, you vote against them. And let me tell you why, because if you don't, if you vote for any variation other than no, even if it goes against what you philosophically and fundamentally believe, you are supporting a bankrupting of the system and a co-opting of the system. If you don't believe that people should have the right to create ballot initiatives and put them on the ballot, then work towards in the, in the light of day and in the right process, a removal of that process. But right now, my friend, that is the law of the land. And thousands of people put their names on a sheet of paper. Thousands of people went in and voted for term limits. A majority of the voters that voted that voted. Yeah, I know it's not a majority of the people. It's just a majority of the people that care enough to go out and vote. And this is ironic. All the while we're having this discussion about whether voter initiative, voter approved term limits should be observed and honored. We're also having the same, dis at the same time, having a discussion about whether or not we should do vote by mail to increase voter turnout. Hmm. Hmm. There's a number of individuals that are very confident that, well, it's not going to be very much. It's going to be just fine. Trust me. Well, I don't trust you. Well, I don't trust you. Well, I don't trust you. That Mr. Pierce is making assumptions about my statements being assumptions. Well, I don't trust you. Well, I don't trust you. Well, I don't trust you. We're not supposed to trust the government. It's the way it goes. It always has been. Oh. It's what it's about. It's just power to the people. Governed by the people, of the people, for the people, not over the top of the people. And I'm telling you, if you do not, if you do not turn down the term limit question now, what's next? How far will they go next time? And and don't turn to me and say, well, I don't. What do you, Chris, what do you think we should do? I'm telling you what I think we should do. We should turn them out now. We should turn down the term limit question. Now, even if you support term limits, or excuse me, a repeal of term limits, you and I both agree it should be and ought to be done properly and go through the proper channels. It, it just it, it boggles the mind. It absolutely boggles the mind. I'm thinking back to Brian Zach running for Homer City Council. And I don't mean to rail against Brian. He's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. I literally think Brian, after me saying all these things right here today, and I said, hey, Brian, uh, my shirt got torn. Uh, he'd take his off and give it to me. That's the kind of guy Brian is. But that doesn't mean that I want him running the community, right? I mean, we can have this open and honest discussion. In fact, I intend on inviting, inviting Brian and all the other candidates here to this program and discuss all the issues. But I'm going back to the non-prepared food tax. As far as I'm concerned, that was, a, that was a line in the sand. If you voted to repeal or proposed to repeal the non-prepared foods tax over the will of the people, over the condition, economically speaking, of the community, irregardless of the fact we're paying three times the amount of water and sewer rates that they are up the road in Sildana, irregardless of that, you want to put more on top of our non-prepared foods. That was a line in the sand of which I will not cross again. Now, you can earn it back. It's like I wrote in the, the Homer Tribune last week. When trust is lost, it's hard to find. You can earn it back. That's the dirty little secret. You've burned that bridge with me for good, Brian, for good. It's gone until you earn it back. You can earn it back, but not in this election cycle. You've got to go away for a little while and come back. It's, uh, you know, you, you bad boy, bad boy. <laughs> what you got to do? $45 a month on tenants. I get emails when I talk about this. I get emails from people that are literally affected by a just a quick little snap of the fingers. And, hey, guess what, guys? We found a whole new pot of money here in Homer, and it was just sitting in the purses and bank accounts and paychecks of the people that uh, are working really hard or have worked all their lives very hard and now are living on a fixed income. They just had an extra $45 a month sitting around, so we're going to pass the buck to them because we're intellectually too lazy to figure out why our water and sewer rates are three times higher than Sildatna. I mean, come on already. I'm, I got an email from an, um, a gal, an older gal, a retired gal, I should say, uh, who, who said in, in very clear terms, it hurt them financially. I'd like Brian and Walt Reedy, city manager Walt Reedy, I'd like them to go up there 
and explain to her why it was necessary to penalize her with an extra $45 a month. Why did they assume the landlords would not pass it on? I think they assumed and knew the landlords would pass along this extra fee of $45 a month. Ergo, it's not going to really cost anybody that much, right? They're going to pass it along. Nobody's going to be the wiser. And booyah, it hurts. It hurts the people that can afford it the least. And I'm tired of it. And I know you are too. And guess what? Homer Voice for Business, what, over 60 businesses now have participated? Why do you think that is, Brian, and other council members? Why do you think that is, Councilman Dave Lewis? It's expensive to live here, and it's not your job to help make it more affordable? Well, we've got three people on the list that stand up, have stood up, and said, you know what? Yeah, I think we can make Homer prosperous and affordable, all in one fell swoop. You can do it. You don't need the government to tell you how to do it. You need the government to get out of the way. It's time to put people back in the seat of power that understand that you matter. You have the power. Power to the people. Power to you. And when trust is lost, it is hard to find. And guess what, council and city manager Walt Reedy? Trust is lost. You've lost our trust. And you need to earn it back. Don't look to me. You look in the mirror. And you say, how did we do this? Why? What happened? What do you mean it's a dangerous path, Bo Burgess? And what comes around goes around. How dare you? How dare you? That's got to change. And how dare you change the dial? Don't you go anywhere. We'll be listening to Mike Pate's Heartland Ride when we return here to what my mother calls the greatest show on earth, Alaska Matters. Welcome back to The Greatest Show on Earth. I'm Chris Story, your host for Great Adventures in the Last Frontier, broadcasting live from the corner of West Hill and the Sterling Highway, the home of the Story Team, home of Story Production, Story Properties, and all things possible. You ever think maybe I ought to come up with a different business name? <laughs> but you know what? Story works. So if it ain't broke, why fix it? I want to send you out to Blackwater Bend Espresso for free. I want to thank Pat and the gang out there for making this portion of the program possible. You know, they bring you the Alaskan Mindbender every single week. You have an opportunity to weigh in right now. Answer this question correctly. Send me a textual message to 299-7653. 299-7653. And if you like a good coffee, like I do, and you like custom-made drinks, custom-blended drinks, if you have a blender bender yet, if you haven't had that, you can't say your bucket list is complete. You're going to like Blackwater Bend. It's the official coffee of Alaska Matters Radio. You know, on my way to Seward the other day, I got two coffees. And this, is an, this is a true, true story. I got two Black Manchinos. That's a 16-ounce Americano with four shots. No cream, but just a little bit of ice to cool it down because my hands are sensitive. And I think that makes me no less masculine, so you can stop laughing now. I have sensitive hands. Anyway, so the... Well, they make it like hellaciously hot because that's just the way it's designed and then you put cream in it. Well, I don't do cream, as you know, as you darn well know. I'm still vegan, so except for salmon, which I'll discuss in a moment. Anyway, so we're on the way uh, over to Seward. Tiffany's taking her car. I'm taking the truck and the boat, um, taking the family skiff over. And I like to refer to it. It's my dad's boat, but I like to refer to it as the, the family. Hey, Dad, shall I take out the family of Luma Weld? <laughs> the family? Anyway, you start planting these seeds early. You, you know, the estate seeds, you start planting them early on in life. You don't wait till the end. It's like not having a living well, for goodness sake. So anyway, I'm taking the family boat over to Seward, and I, I stop out of Blackwater Bend, and I order two black manchinos. And again, you would think, well, there's just one person in the car. Why are you getting two drinks? And it's only a three-hour drive. Well, I require a lot of coffee because I'm, I need stimulation for the brain. So I'm thinking, I'm talking, I'm creating, I'm innovating the whole time that I'm driving. And I need the, the caffeinated stimulation. So I knew that by the time I hit Soldatna, I would be looking for more coffee. But it, their coffee sucks. I mean, just to put a blunt point on the end of this sentence, their coffee I just haven't found a decent cup. And if, if I'm missing it, you're welcome to tell me. But my experience, Blackwater Bend is the high point of any trip I've taken. I stop into Blackwater Bend and then I go. So I get these two coffees. And sure enough, by the time I get to Soldatna, uh, the other one's gone. I stop in, you know, grab a few uh, supplies for the road, et cetera, some vegetables to snack upon as I head over to Seward. And uh, I get back into the truck and I think, and I see that second cup sitting there. I know full well by now it's just warm. It's not hot, hot, hot. It's just warm. But it is still nonetheless warm and delicious. 
and amazing. And it was worth the way it was worth having my, it was like a life support system built right in Blackwater Bend. Do it today. Here's your question and I'll send you there for free. Alexander Baranoff cited Resurrection Bay on what day? I did not know this. This is totally new trivia to me. Alexander Baranoff cited Resurrection Bay on what day in 1792? Was it A, Easter Day, B, Christmas Day, or B, Seward's Day? Again, 1792, Alexander Baranoff, Baranoff cited Resurrection Bay on what day? Easter, Christmas, or Seward's Day? Text me right now, 299-7653. Do it. Don't wait. Don't just, oh, yeah, somebody else is going to win. You could win. 299-7653. And if you get it wrong, I'll, I'll, I'll nudge you back over. It's okay. Just give it a shot. Resurrection Bay on what day? Easter, Christmas, or Seward's Day? Text me now. I want to send you out there for free. Look at that. People are entering to win already, but you can too. 299-7653. Randomly chosen during a break will be two of you, two winners. Do what you got to do. So we've been talking about a lot of things political. We've been talking a lot about saving the, the nation, saving liberty. It all starts in your backyard. You know that. You know, Go back and listen. Go to our website, AdventureAlaskaRadio.com, AdventureAlaskaRadio.com, and just type in the search engine because it's down a ways now in the archives, but type in Agenda 21. Listen to my interview with Nikki Rapana. She's the author of 2020, Our Common Destiny. Remember the whole point of Agenda 21, now it's named future earth or whatever united nations knows we're on to them the the local uh, oligarchs know we're on to them so they've changed the name to future earth besides it just sounds better for the you know the ecologists and everybody well future earth we got a earth is in the balance remember earth is in the lurch anyway so you know that the whole point of it is control and power it's, it's about taking the top down to the middle and the bottom up to the middle. It's, it's not about having anything other than just enough. That's what Agenda 21 is about. We're not going to take your property. We're just going to take some of the use of your property, which is why it dovetails so neatly into what Mike Navarre did with the Anadromous Streams Ordinance. Mayor Navarre seamlessly, with a sleight of hand, morphed 2011-12, which was birthed by Assemblyman Smith in 2011, into 2013-18, which was born through the task force, so-called task force, into 2013-18, stripping private property rights away without written notification. And I know when I say that, there's many among you, well, a couple among you, and many among them that say, stop talking about no notification it was given. It was given through the process. No, it wasn't given. It was never repealed. Never once did those property owners live without the sword hanging over their head. They knew something was coming, and it was just a matter of how much liberty could they get back through the process. Never was it going to go away. This is so important. Please, please stay tuned to the whole program. We're going to go on the Heartland Ride with Mike Pate in just a little while. I'll be looking at the Blackwater Bend Espresso Mind Bender questions, or the answers, I should say, in just a moment. And when we come back, I'll announce the two winners and give you the answer. We're also going to talk about the Peninsula State Fair going smoke-free. And did you know, drum roll please, breaking news here, 2013 E-City announced by Google. Which city was it? I'll tell you when we come back here to Alaska Matters. Welcome back to Alaska Matters. I'm Chris Story, your host for Great Adventures in the Last Frontier. Now, I'll answer the Blackwater Bend Espresso Mind Bender question in a moment. I want to give a few more of you a chance. I've given a couple nudges. We've had a, a lot of right answers and then some that are close, but I wanted everybody to have a chance to be in the blind drawing. And so uh, I've given a couple of nudges out there via text message. And so 299-7653 is, uh, is the text number for you to participate. Now, talking about adventures. Homer resident Mike Pate decided it'd be a really good idea, I guess, you'll find out from his, uh, his own words, in his own words, uh, to go on a transcontinental bike ride by himself. So I had an opportunity to sit down with him. We spent a long time talking about this. We've taken his story and we've broken it into a few 
parts, and we'll air the first episode right now. So please join me for Mike Pate's Heartland Ride. Mike, a little background about you before we get into your journey that took you from coast to coast. Where were you born, raised, reared? Where are you from? What's your tale? Well, I was actually conceived in Anchorage, but I was born in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I, was only, I only lived there for three weeks <laughs> and then returned to Anchorage. And then my family came to Homer when I was five. Well, so you, so you moved here when you were just a toddler and then... What what kept you here? Why why are you still in Homer, Alaska after all these years? I left after high school and went back to Oregon, went to college, and I was gone for six years. Uh, finished graduate school there, and um, and then went to the slope to pay back my college loans, and also the mercenary in me <laughs> wanted to take advantage of what was available. I met my wife in 1975 on the slope, and we subsequently got married. And the following January of 76, we did not want to go back to the slope. Um, she's a Fairbanks girl and fortunately said we didn't have to live in Fairbanks. <laughs> <laughs> you won that round. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and then we looked around the state and my mother had a very small insurance agency, one person. And my father had been injured uh, on the job and uh, had to stay home and she had to take care of him. And so I told her I would buy the agency from her, run it for two years, and then Kathy and I would be relocating to the lower 48. And that was in 1976. <laughs> Best laid plans. Well, we've been very happy here. Um, we've raised three children, and uh, we may well get a secondary dwelling sometime somewhere else, but this will all be always be our primary residence. We're here to talk about your trek on uh, a bicycle from west to east coast, but explain to me just briefly, how do you go from a one- now a two-person agency to a very, well, a large agency that then was uh, purchased by a larger entity all those years later. What was the leap? What happened? Uh, it's, there's nothing magic about it. I mean, you simply get up and go to work at 7 o'clock in the morning. You stay there till 7 o'clock at night, and uh, you do your best to communicate with the community and with individuals, and Homer is the only reason that we were successful. Uh, it's, it's simply built itself. We did some business outside of uh, the immediate area, but not very much, really. And then when Wells Fargo came along and uh, offered to buy the agency and then combine it with several other agencies and asked me to run their statewide operation, why it was a relatively easy transition to make. Mm -hmm. You did that. You've then retired from, from the insurance business, and you wake up one day and you see, you know what would be kind of cool? If I got on my bicycle and I went from one shore to the other shore of the United States of America. Describe that. Describe what into planning the trip, the decision behind it, and then we'll get into the journey. It didn't happen exactly that way. <laughs> uh, I actually, uh, <clears throat> the first thing I decided I wanted to try to do was to climb. And so I flew to, I had never climbed anything. Um, and, well, the, the, stair, the stairs. And the corporate ladder, if you will. <laughs> But other than that. <laughs> I never got very high on the corporate ladder. <laughs> believe, believe me, it's a slippery slope. Um, so I flew to Washington and took a seven-day course on Mount Rainier, um, crevasse retrieval and those kinds of things. And then we summited Mount Rainier. And that was in September of 2010. I remember coming back to Camp Muir, which is at 10,000 feet, and, and lying there and listening to all the other participants. Well, all the other. There were eight of us in the party well, this is what we're going to do next in this one. And, and saying to myself, I will never do this again. <laughs> That's it. I was absolutely exhausted. Um, of course, I was the oldest member of the group, uh, but that's no defense. Uh, I went back to Seattle and uh, stayed with my daughter for a couple of days. We went to a bookstore. I bought a few books. Um, and then the following summer, uh, flew to Russia and climbed Mount Elbrus from the north side. Um, our guide was... <clears throat> Uh, a Russian fellow, about 72 years old, and um, it was a very difficult climb for and You're me. indicating short in stature. You're holding yes. your hand, so he wasn't oh. a very tall fellow. No, no. Very uh, small man. Yeah, but, uh, and then our American guide was Vern Tejas, and people who climb would know Vern. He's um, well-known worldwide. Um, so you say he, you're not going to climb again, but then you decide... Well, I decided, I you know, I, mean, I, could, I could try one more. Right. And, and so... Uh, we did summit, although it was very difficult for me. I had uh, we did we, we made the summit and we came back to high camp and then coming down um, it was was hard. But 
I flew from there then to Kilimanjaro uh, in Tanzania and climbed Kilimanjaro 10 days later and summited. And then, you know, I remember coming down Elbrus thinking, um, I had met a, one of the fellows that would have been with me on Rainier had, did long bike rides and, and I've ridden bikes for, you know, 15 years or so. Thinking, you know, if I, if I, if I wasn't roped to these guys, I could stop when I want to and rest. Mm -hmm. And if I'm on a bicycle by myself, I can stop whenever I want to and rest right. and, and, and have a drink. And so maybe that would be a better thing for me to do. <laughs> That's my new thing. <laughs> so the following spring, I flew down to Eugene, Oregon, and I picked up a bike that I had ordered, made by Comotion. Their factory is there in Eugene. And I rode from Eugene down to L.A. And... Um, you know, again, it was that was, a couple hundred, three hundred miles, maybe? It's twelve hundred miles. Oh, twelve hundred miles. Twelve hundred right. miles. All right. And you know, you go through the redwoods and Big Sur, and it's um, pretty challenging country, even though it's not that high, you know, a thousand feet or so. But you're constantly going up and down. There's nothing flat about the Oregon or California coast. And where would the ride take Mike next? Well, you'll have to tune in to Alaska Matters next week and find out. We'll be airing the second and third parts in our series in the following couple of episodes of Alaska Matters. Really a grueling, rewarding, inspiring, and philosophical, dare I say spiritual, journey that Mike Pate went on. He'll take you on that journey. You'll hear part two next week on Alaska Matters. Don't go anywhere. We'll come back with our, our Alaskan Mindbender answer and the winners and a little more to sum up on the program when we return here to Alaska Matters. All right, the small city of Seward's nestled at the foot of Mount Marathon along the scenic shoreline of the Resurrection Bay, a restless, fickle body of water teeming with abundant species of fish, frolicking marine mammals, and in 1792, the bay was sighted and named on Resurrection Day, Easter Sunday, by Alexander Burinov. I've been corrected by uh, Erudite. Let me go back to his text. He's a friend, so I can call him that. Okay, Tim the Erudite says, Buranov. Bur no, that doesn't even sound right. Buranov? But it's spelled with an A. It's Baranov. I'm going with Baranov. <laughs> anyway. Point is, Resurrection Bay was sighted on Resurrection Day, Easter Sunday in 1792. Ian and Christina, you're the two winners going to Blackwater Bend for free. I want to thank everybody who participated. However, the random winners are Ian and Christina. So thank you very much for participating, everyone. Uh, Ian and Christina, you can go out to Blackwater Bend Espresso and pick up your coffee cards soon. All right, so we've talked about term limits. We've talked about pretty much everything. I'm really excited to hear the rest of Mike's ride, even though I sat there and listened to him, and I was riveted the whole time I talked to him. Mainly, he talked to me. Uh, it, it, I'm excited to hear the rest of it. I can't wait to relive the journey with Mike Pate, so be sure to tune into to that next week. Let's talk a little bit about, and I've got something prepared. I think it'll enhance this, I think. You tell me. Is it enhancing the mood for you? A little staycation time. Oh, when the sun beats down yeah. and burns the tar up on the roof. Doesn't usually happen here, but that's okay. Yeah, went over to for the weekend. So hot, you wish your tile time in a bottle. Such a great little vacation spot. It really is. And you think, oh, you don't have a lot of money for vacation this year. You don't want to spend a lot of money. Maybe you're all going to Maui or somewhere warm. That segment brought to you by Alaska Aloha. Maybe you just want to go to Seward for the weekend. Why not? Just do it. Such a great little vacation spot, like I said. Yeah, winter's coming up fast. Take a drive over there. Eat on the waterfront. You can take a cruise affordably. Cruise around the glaciers. It's really cool. You'll be treated like a tourist. And that's what I really love about it. Is I love being treated like a tourist in my own backyard. The same thing can be said of the Homer Spit. Think about this. Let's say you live in Homer or Anchor Point or the surrounding area. And you say, you know what I want to do? I want to go on a vacation, but I don't have a lot of time. I may not have a lot of money set aside for it right now. So I'm going to rent a condominium on the water in Homer on the spit. Or a room upstairs of, above a small business or something like that. You know, they have little rooms for rent. I'm going to eat at the Boardwalk Fish and Chips. I'm going to go back on, I'm gonna, on Friday night. I'm going to have their, their world-famous halibut on a stick. Saturday night, I'm going to have the prawn basket. You're going to feel like a tourist. I'm telling you. They're going to treat you like a tourist. Everyone's going to be happy to see you. Get a brand new... Here's the secret to it all. This is the secret to staycationing that no one else will tell you. Only from me. 
two things. Wash your car, number one. Maybe throw a coat of wax on it through the drive-thru, but wash your car. Number two, get a brand new rain jacket. You're going to need it around here anyway. Get a brand new, don't be going in with your old, you know, duct taped rain jacket and stuff. It's utilitarian and it works fine, but go in with a brand new raincoat and you'll be treated like a tourist. What's that, Dave? Yeah, yeah, and of course, right, an Alaskan one like you got here, so get it locally and make it brand new. You're going to be feeling and treated just like a tourist. Do a little shopping, buy some gifts, buy some postcards and mail them. You will feel reju rejuvenated. Trust me. It's, this is the best this is the best recipe to go into winter. You literally can avoid a lot of the the prescribed happiness over the course of the winter by simply going on a staycation right now. Right now. But the secret is Eat at the boardwalk fish and chips on the spit. Listen to the music. Eat out on the deck, even if it's inclement. Feel the, the, the rhythm of the ocean just outside your door. Don't delay. One more opportunity for you. Let's say you already live in Homer. Let's say you already eat at the boardwalk fish and chips every week. And by the way, if you mention Wendell, they'll even make you original, authentic Latitude 59 food at the boardwalk fish and chips. How about Anchor Point? Stake the Anchor River in. Eat good home-style cooked food. Enjoy the views of the river. Walk their trails and beaches. It's a whole I'm telling you, coming from Homer, walking the beaches in Anchor Point on the inlet, it's a different experience. Fish for dollies in the river. Shop for gifts at the Anchor River Inn. I mean, seriously, good coffee at Blackwater Bend is just down the road. Then go back out to your vacation spot. Either rent a room or make camp. Make memories in Anchor Point. And by the way, if you're visiting there and you want to check back on the river, anchorriverin.com is your window to the river from wherever you are in the world. The Anchor Cam is alive and well, 24-7, 365 at anchorriverin.com. And don't forget to stop into the Anchor Point Natural Foods, a little healthy living. they got the farm fresh eggs, produce, supplements, everything you need, all there in Anchor Point, just moments away from where you live right now. Now, I told you earlier in the program I was going to share the best recipe you'd ever get your pen and paper out. This is the time to write this down. You're never going to hear or get a better recipe to cook a silver salmon. Now, specifically to silvers or kings, but silvers specifically, two reasons why. Historical and uh, oil. So it's, it's historically something that tradition that we did. So it's a tradition in our family to cook a fish this way, but it's silver specifically. Secondly, it lends itself really, really well, the silver does, because it's so oily. It's got to be fresh. Don't be pulling stuff out from last year. You go out there and you get yourself a fresh one. Here's what you do. Now, what, what we did last night was we cooked a little guy. He's about three pounds. And I'm not bragging either. I'm just telling you the facts. I didn't fillet it out because it's only three pounds. So I wonder sometimes if you just think I'm the biggest doofus on the face of the earth when I say things like fillet. I know it's fillet, but it's just more fun. to say. You know, Order, next time you go into it, if you feel like it, and you, you go to uh, McDonald's, order a fillet of fish. It's fun. It's fun to say. Anyway, so we didn't want to fillet it out, so we decided just to cut the dorsal fin off the back gut it, head it, leave the tail on, leave all the other fins on, it adds to the ambiance, and you, you make like this little canoe of tinfoil, and you set it in there with its back to the, to the countertop, and its belly, you know, laid open and just there as a receptacle. A little olive oil, rub it down with olive oil, then salt and pepper that to your liking. I also used a little granulated garlic. Then I lined its ribs with onion, Right, So you take like the onion and you have it, and then you, you make rings, but like half a rings, and you line the whole belly with all those onions. Then like three or four cloves of crushed garlic, mashed garlic, put that in there. Then strips of red pepper, bell pepper. You can use green if you want to, but I use red pepper. Then more salt and pepper, then some white wine, then a little more olive oil, then lemon slices. And then I wrapped it up with the tinfoil, left that little canoe in the bottom, then I wrapped tinfoil all around that and put it on the Weber, put it on the charcoal grill. About 10, 15 minutes per pound is what you, but you kind of don't, don't blame me if you burn it and ruin it. You got to pay attention, but I'm telling you about 10, 15 minutes per pound is what you want to cook it to. And remember, it's going to keep cooking when you pull it off. That's the best. I'm telling you the bone litter, the flesh fell off. The skin fell off the meat when we pulled this thing out. The bone literally just stripped right out and left all the meat perfectly in place. And the taste, I, I can't even begin to describe it to you. It is perfect. Do it while the silvers are running. If you want, you can do this with a, a red 
uh, sockeye or you can do with a king salmon or even a Dolly Varden. It's just an incredible way. But if you want to, we call this a Rocky River pig. I don't have time in two minutes to tell you why we call this a Rocky River pig. But um, you know what? I think that that'll be a story for another time. Another time. We will get into that. There's just, it, it, are you snorting or snoring, Dave? Snorting, because it almost sounds like snoring. Like, in other words, that's boring. It's not a boring story. Trust me, it is not a boring story. There's uh, an army blanket involved, um, a, a variety of things that I won't get into. All right, Kenai Peninsula State Fair went smoke-free, sort of, but they did have smoking areas. I wanted to get your opinion on it. If you've got an opinion about that, story at xyz.net. I also wanted to talk about how Google had named Homer, Alaska, the E-City, of 2013 for Alaska. I don't know whether to be proud of that or what, but I think I am proud of it. 2013 E-City for the state of Alaska. The award goes to Homer. Congrats, Homer. Homer Voice for Business asked for $150,000 of the Endeavor drill rig funds to go towards and offset the, the astronomically high cost of water and sewer, three times that of our Soldatna neighbors. And the council and mayor all kind of ganged up on the group and said, well, uh, you can't take that out of an enterprise fund. Even the lawyer, the city lawyer piped up and said, we can't take that out of the enterprise funds. And what I think everyone failed to remember was we took $187,000 from them in taxes and stuffed it away into a windfall permanent fund account. That's the money we're talking about. Folks, it matters so much that you pay attention and you vote and you encourage people around you. Remember, 10, 10, 10. We'll get into that tomorrow. Plus, there's a Soldatna fiasco. Wait till you hear this. You're not going to feel quite so special when you hear what Tim Cashman's got to tell us tomorrow on Radio Realty. For all of us at Alaska Matters, I'm Chris Story, encouraging you to go out there and enjoy your own backyard in the Great Land. <laughs>